Merrick Garland went on 60 Minutes last night. I, I don't know if anybody's really still watching 60 Minutes. All my old, all, all my, like my friends are like, they watch it because we're older. <laughs> but like, I don't think anybody in their 20s or 30s is watching 60 anymore. anymore. Anyway, Merrick Garland did go on. And I mean, the sanctimonious performance that happened on that show, Dave Rubin, it was like, he, he said, first of all, he said that if Joe Biden interferes in, in the Jack Smith investigation into Donald Trump, Merrick Garland's gonna resign. That's yeah. that's how committed he is to the rule. Let's watch it. Let's watch it for fun. Sot two. If the President vapors, Biden the vapors. asked you to take action with regard to the Trump investigation, what would your reaction be? I am sure that that will not happen, um, but I would not uh, do anything um, in that regard. Um, and if necessary, I would resign, but I don't, there is no uh, sense that anything like that will happen. Have you ever had to tell him, hands off these investigations, Mr. President? No, because he has never tried to put hands on these investigations. Sweet, isn't it? They're, they're bromance. Can, <laughs> these guys, they have such morality when it's a pre-problem. Unfortunately, when we have real problems or post-problems, they seem to have no morality or no ethics or anything else. I mean, it's just, first off, the question itself is a perfect reason why no one in their 20s oh. or 30s would watch 60 Minutes. You don't say to the attorney general, basically, would you do anything illegal? Like, or would you, <laughs> so would you allow the president to do anything illegal? Like, he's going to be like, yes, actually, <laughs> yes. I would give Biden a little Great wiggle room point. to do some illegal. It's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's what the mainstream media does with almost everything. And Megan, I want to give you a little shout out here because, you know, at the beginning of September, you launched your new studio, which is absolutely beautiful. And on the same day, I launched my new studio here. And it's I said on my pretty. show, what a, what a beautiful, I didn't know you were launching it until I saw it that day. But I said, what a beautiful moment in the juxtaposition of what's happening with corporate media absolutely collapsing, firing people, cutting budgets, everything else. And then you got two young upstarts like Megyn Kelly and Dave Rubin <laughs> reinvesting in their companies and all of that stuff. And I think that that 60 minute clip is a perfect version of that, because if you sat down with Merrick Garland, you would never ask a question so idiotic like that. And that's oh why God. people are tuning into you and tuning out of this stuff. I'm embarrassed for him. I'm embarrassed. I mean, seriously, <laughs> even sitting with Trump, I realized that if I asked him tough questions, especially on the legal stuff, he might not give me another interview. That's always a risk with Trump, you know, unless you're in more of a, you know, fan position. He doesn't really want to sit with you. Uh, but I I had to do my job, right? That's, that's the job. So I tried to keep it friendly enough, but like with some challenging questions so that I did my job. Scott Pelley didn't get the memo because he mm. asked him, as by my count, one, one question about Hunter Biden, the biggest scandal of involving the Biden administration right now, other than Biden's age. And would you listen to the question? This is absolutely pathetic. It's not one. The allegation is, Mr. Attorney General, that what is described in some quarters as the Biden Justice Department is taking it easy on the president's son. Well, look, um, this investigation began <laughs> under David Weiss. Uh, David Weiss is a longstanding career prosecutor, and he was appointed by Mr. Trump. You are not participating in those decisions? No, Mr. Weiss is making those decisions. The White House is not attempting to influence those no, decisions? Absolutely not. Oh, my God. It's the same thing. Megan, how many, um, you, you know more people than I do. You've been in the game a little bit longer. How many uh, crackheads do you know that got jobs at Ukrainian energy companies? Because I can only think of one. Do you, do you know any others? <laughs> Just the one is coming to mind. Just, just the one. That in and of itself, that Hunter Biden, who was an admitted crackhead, got a job for, I believe, $80,000 a month to advise Burisma, a Ukrainian energy company, on anything. He had no expertise in Ukrainian energy or anything else. He got that job because of the access to his dad, who was then vice president. Everyone can look at who did what and when did they do it and everything else. And you can look at why does Joe Biden, why does Joe Biden have assets worth like 20 million bucks or something like that and all of that stuff. He's a humble civil servant. Fine. But all you would have to look at if you're looking for any degree of corruption, and now especially when we have this war, not war in Ukraine, is why 
did his son have this job? And until Joe Biden honestly answers that question, or someone in the administration honestly answers that question, because you know they're going to keep putting him in front of cameras less and less for because of some of the mental stuff that's going on that we all see, but they refuse to acknowledge. Uh, that really is what this is all about. You give me an answer. If someone answers that airtight, and actually, you know what, Dave, it does turn out, Hunter Biden was an expert in this. You, you missed the six months of studying he did at an international business school on Ukrainian energy. Then maybe I'll let it go. But no. until then, you don't need much more. I don't need to see all the bank accounts. I don't need to see much more. This is what politics is. You get access to people uh, through these types of connections. And this is the most blatant version of it. Can, like it's the, the sin here is so much more grave than even first meets the eye. It was 60 Minutes and Leslie Stahl that refused to acknowledge the laptop, that refused to report on the laptop. The only reason we know about her embarrassing exchange with Trump on it is because Trump taped the interview himself and then released yep. that segment after the 60 Minutes piece on him, in which Leslie Stahl refused to ask about the laptop because, quote, it can't be verified. It can't be verified. <laughs> well, of course, you know, because a year later, her own news organization magically verified it after the 2020 election. So it's the same forum now having access to the sitting attorney general, and you got a chance to ask about Hunter, to ask about his corruption and what's on the now verified laptop. And what do they come up with? The allegation is, Mr. Attorney General, that what is described in some quarters as the Biden Justice Department is taking it easy on the president's son. You're not participating in the decisions? The White House is not attempting to influence the decisions? Okay, great, let's move on. That's just, it's, right. it's an embarrassment. It's so embarrassing because it's like, again, like he'd be like, yes, actually I have been involved a little bit and we have discussed it with Joe. <laughs> He's telling him the what edges. the answer is as if Garland couldn't figure it out in the first place. But this is, you know, I often call this the machine. And this sometimes you can see something, how the machine defends itself so quickly. And you're right, that that uh, video a couple of years ago of Trump with Leslie Stahl, that Trump was wise enough to record is a perfect moment related to all of this. Because now it's you just flash forward another four years, we're still in the midst of the lies, and 60 Minutes is still in the midst of laundering the lies of the administration and covering for guys like Merrick Garland, who if they were honestly doing their job, and I, and I truly mean this in a, in a nonpartisan way. Look, I, I am not for the Biden administration. I think the Democrats have by and large gone completely off the deep end and all of that stuff. But it, it is just important to have some level of truth in our system. And right now there is almost no level of truth, whether it's the media, so in this case, 60 Minutes with the terrible questions, or whether it's Merrick Garland or it's Joe Biden or or I call her cringe, Jean-Pierre. It's the only person I have a nickname for. <laughs> uh, like any of these people, they lie about everything. And then what it does is it makes good people, they either go kind of crazy because it's hard to deal with lies all the time, or you just check out altogether, right? How many people do you know, Megan, now that are just like, I just can't deal with politics anymore? And that's that's a recipe for for a really sick society when good people just can't take it anymore. Yeah, deal with it, you must, because uh, you know otherwise you wind up with, quote, public servants like Merrick Garland. We do have the 60 Minutes thought, just for old time's sake, here it is. It's this, I think it's one of the biggest scandals I've ever seen, and you don't cover it. Biggest. You want to talk about- Well, because it can't be verified. You want to talk I'm about insignificant you. things. I'm telling you- Of course it can be verified. Excuse we, me, we they found the verify. laptop. Leslie, it Leslie. can't be verified. What can't be verified? The laptop. Why do you say that? Because Even the family verified. hasn't, the family on the laptop, he's gone into hiding. For five days, he's gone into hiding. He's preparing for your debate. Oh, it's taken him five days to prepare? I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay. Amazing. And, you know, now they now they have the sitting head of the Department of Justice, which oversees the FBI, which had that laptop back in 2019. And you don't say? We, we mistakenly said that the laptop was unverifiable right before the 2020 election. Unbeknownst to us at the time, because we failed to look, your pre predecessors, Department of Justice and FBI, had the laptop in hand and had it verified. We regret the error to our viewers. Would you like to expand on what was found on that laptop today, sir? Can you, for example, opine on this email about Hunter complaining he had to give half of his salary to his dad, to pop? To his, like You could have just gone down the list. You could have tried to save your asses from the embarrassing spectacle that Leslie Stahl engaged in, but no, we went a different way. 
junk science. That's what the doctor calls many of those fruit and vegetable supplements on the market right now. Junk science because they use extracts of common produce department fruits and vegetables with basically no health benefits. But I want to tell you about Field of Greens. Field of Greens is different. They use the whole organic fruit and vegetable, not a watered down supplement. And it's backed by the Better Health Promise, which I'm going to tell you about. Each ingredient in Field of Greens was scientifically chosen to support vital organs like heart, lungs, and kidney health. Others support your immune system, your blood pressure, your metabolism, and healthy weight loss. Their Better Health Promise is simple. The next time you're at the doctor for a checkup, if the doctor does not say you're looking healthier than before, you get your money back. That's a deal right there. So let me get you started with 15% off your order. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use my promo code MK. Promo code MK at fieldofgreens.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.